Thank you so much. At this time, I would like to, before I read this citation for Sting, uh, I'd like to say what a, an honor it is for me. And you know, the first time I listened to Sting's music with the police and by himself, uh, I felt I was going to school. I was learning something. And that's very rare because for an artist to teach another artist something with his music, that's unheard of, at least in my, the way I see it. Um, I would like to read this citation and tell you, Sting, what an honor it is for me to be here with you. Um, the 2017 Polar Music Prize is awarded to the singer, musician, and composer Sting, whose given name is Gordon Sumner from Wall and Send, I hope I pronounced that right, Sting, in North Umberland. Sting grew up in a shipyard town in northeastern England. As a child, his thoughts and dreams roamed as far as the ships that sailed from his town. National and international travel has also characterized his music. As a member of the trio, The Police, and later as a solo artist, Sting has never sat down, I'm sorry, Sting has never sat back and rested on his laurels. He has put down anchors, his anchors, in more musical, uh, musical harbors than perhaps any other artist of his generation. As a composer, Sting has combined classic pop with virtuoso musicianship and an openness to all genres and sounds from around the world. Sting is a true citizen of the world. He has also been relentlessly untiring in using his position as an arena-filling artist to promote human rights. So now, Sting, I invite you up here to receive your prize from His Majesty the King. Thank you. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellences, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am deeply honored to be here tonight with all of you. I am well aware of the prestigious history of this award, the extraordinary talents of those who preceded me, and their significant contributions to the world of music. So I'm both grateful and somewhat bemused by my inclusion here. I'm standing alongside Wayne Shorter, 
a man whose music and philosophy I have admired for many, many years. Also, Mr. Jose Feliciano, whose influence on my own music, both as a singer and a guitarist, has gone unsaid until now. Thank you, Jose. My own musical life began as a dream, or a series of dreams. All of my dreams as a boy involved music. I dreamt that I would become a musician. I dreamt that I would become a writer of songs, that I would sing those songs all over the world, and that I would make my living in the honorable profession of music making. But even in my wildest fantasies, it would have been difficult to imagine an event such as this one, and among such august and distinguished company. However, while I'm immensely grateful to be here this evening, perhaps the greatest honor a musician can receive often comes in more humble surroundings than this. I make a daily habit of walking in any city I find myself in. And it's a fairly regular occurrence for a man or a woman in the street to stop me and say, thank you for your music. They will often go on to say things like this. I fell in love to one of your songs. Or we, we played one of our songs at our wedding, one of your songs. Or even when Uncle Charlie died, we played one of your songs at his funeral. In hearing these welcome comments, I have come to realize that popular music in all its forms has managed to create the soundtrack to people's memories, the prompts and musical cues for their personal emotional landscapes. This is as surprising to me as it is nourishing. For these seemingly commonplace events, I am most grateful. What have I learned as a musician? The most significant piece of musical advice I was ever given was from the great arranger Gil Evans, who told me this. Sting, he said. He called me Sting. There is no such thing as a wrong note. It is always the note that follows that will define whether the first note was wrong or not. After some thought, I realized that this was profound advice, not only in the context of music, but also in life. All of us make mistakes, but it is how we react to those apparent mistakes in what follows that defines our human intelligence, our ability to adapt, to improvise, and to evolve. I can only claim one and only one nugget of musical truth in my own thinking. It is this, that in the composition of music, silence is every bit as important as sound, equally important to note value, timbre, and pitch. For example, in Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, the opening mark on the first bar of the score is a quarter note of silence. I'm assuming that that was a radical musical innovation for the time. In the playing of Miles Davis, or indeed Mr. Wayne Shorter, the silences they leave are as significant and meaningful as the notes they play. John Cage's four minutes, 33 seconds, takes this idea perhaps to its radical extreme, but I take his point. In my own work, I've attempted to allow melodies to breathe, uncluttered by dense layers of sound whenever possible, adhering to the old maxim that less is more. And so I've come to believe that if there is such a thing as a perfect music, then that perfect music may well be this, silence. And all that we do as musicians is create a frame and hopefully a beautiful frame around that perfection that we call silence. So this is probably a perfect place for me to stop talking. <laughs> Adopt my own philosophy and fall silent, albeit in profound and heartfelt gratitude for this unexpected honor. Thank you so much.